Well, we're uh, onto the part of the show now where we talk about the awesome Cyblogs articles this week. And this week was actually really hard to pick. There's all sorts of cool stuff. Mm. My first pick of the week is um, our blogger Skepticon, uh, Darcy Cohen's complaint against the, uh, what does it stand for? The Immunization Advisory Service, which is a large misnomer. Um, essentially, uh, they're a chari- uh, they are registered as a charitable organization, so they get tax benefits, yada, yada, yada. Um, Darcy has gone through uh, a bunch of their publications and has essentially pulled them apart and pulled them up on all the bad science within um, their... Uh, particular publications through mm. their, their newsletters, their websites. He's gone through all of it. He's explained the science behind it and has provided references to the reputable science that actually refutes a lot of their assertions. It's a really, really important p- uh, to, for someone to do this because yeah. uh, vaccination rates are falling around the world, mostly because of misinformation around vaccines. And it's really, really sad because there's no reason for it to be. Exactly. Well, there's a lot of dogma and sort of old science going around. So the, the IAS basically are, are, what do we call them? Anti-vaxxers. They're yep. anti-vaccination and very strongly so. And they're still putting out things like there's, you know, thiamerosol is, is killing our kids. And uh, are they still pulling the uh, vaccination causes autism line? Yeah, yeah. They're still you badgering go. on about that. And the vaccines contain mercury. And it's just like, no, no, they don't. Exactly, and there's there's a lot of scary stuff, and and sort of, or or even you know, natural immunity is better than than acquired immunity, and and clearly they haven't seen what polio does to people, and they haven't been watching the measles outbreak up north, or but, even understand basic immunobiology. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so Darcy, I mean, his document is huge and well written, and we're very very grateful to him for not only for putting it together, but but for sharing it with us and. We'd suggest that uh, because it's vaccination week, if not now, then very shortly, am mm. I correct? Um, share it with everyone you know, anybody you know who's got small kids, uh, have a chat with them. If they're not vaccinating their kids, uh, find out why. Perhaps we can do something about this. Remember, information is the key. It really is, yeah. <laughs> Good information. <laughs> well, yes, that too. Right, uh, two little posts from Grant Jacobs. The first one, very quickly, Peter Gluckman, who's New Zealand's chief science advisor, he is going to be, uh, well, he's starting a blog. So that should be really interesting. Um, mm-hmm. It'll be on PMCSA, which is the Prime Minister's Chief Science Advisor, dot org dot NZ. Um, yeah, it, I'm, I'm curious to see, to see what he has to say and how he says it and, and all of, all of that. Um, it, uh, it, the news was actually tweeted from his Twitter account, which is at Chief Sci Advisor, in case anybody wants to follow that. Uh, <laughs> the second one is a post entitled Monkey Quotes, uh, and as Grant says, I'm a fan of short, witty, clever, or erudite aphorisms, as long as they're not too cliched. And apparently Ben Goldacre, a well-known science writer, has called out for quotes to put on his speaking tour poster that he's doing with uh, Brian Cox, um, Singh, uh, yeah, and a couple of other people, and so people sort of sent in some of their favorite quotations. I'd, I'd have to say one of my favorites is from Terry Pratchett, and it's, I'd rather be a rising ape than a fallen angel. I think that's awesome. Gorgeous. <laughs> then, go, Terry. I know, right? Uh, Albert Einstein, only two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity, and I'm not sure about the former. Um some some of them are, are a little bit more serious or beautiful. Um, the universe is not only queerer than we suppose, but queerer than we can suppose. Haldane. Uh, he who understands baboon would do more towards metaphysics than Locke. Uh, and then Carl Sagan, of course, somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known. Um, so there's a whole bunch of them. Have a look. I, th- I think they're all marvelous. You, they're just kind of big to be put on T-shirts and mugs, and I'm sure they already have been. Speaking of amazing, really cool science stuff, um, our blogger uh, Chris McDowell from Seeing Data Blogs uh, posted a really, really cool post with a video called Whale Fall, and it's a it's a little puppetry animation that shows you what happens to the carcass of a whale when it mm. dies. It sinks down to the ocean floor and slowly uh, is recycled by nature, and it's amazing. It's very sad, and it's very, very beautiful. Well worth taking a look. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then a, a, a final one. Now, this is from Daniel Collins, who blogs at Wyology, and Daniel um, talks about New Zealand's water cycle and science behind uh, particularly freshwater here. And this is about public perceptions of New Zealand's freshwater environment, um, because it's it's really important for people trying to convey water science to the public to understand what the public knows and what the public thinks. So there is a biennial report from Ken Huey and colleagues at Lincoln University, which covers not only the environment in general, but 
um, has given special treatment to freshwater. So Daniel will be covering the results in two parts. The first is on the state and knowledge of freshwaters, and the second on freshwater management. Um, the main conclusion is that apparently New Zealand is more concerned about water than any other of our environmental issues. Certainly every time there's results that show that our, our rivers and our streams and our lakes are dirtier than they should be, the, the, the press erupts mm -hmm. um, about it. And I have to say fair play. Um, yep. it, it's been definitively shown that, that agriculture here is, is doing a tremendous amount of damage to our freshwater, all of which or most of which can be mitigated with the right education um, and the right incentives. I think a lot of people just don't understand um, how dangerous having cows tramping through streams, for example, every day can be. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so most of the respondents believed that New Zealand's environment and fresh waters were in a good or adequate state. However, uh, apparently rivers and lakes are a major worry, with wetlands and then groundwater followed not too far behind. I'm not going to get into uh, all of the results. There's lots of them. Um, but he does does give, uh, well, he basically says it's clear that, that we don't know all that we could about our fresh waters. Cantabrians, for example, tend to know more about their groundwater, but I think that's because it's such a significant resource in the region with, with all, everything that's been going on there. Um, and, and he reckons that partly why we don't know all we can about our fresh waters, particularly things like wetlands and lowland streams, is because, of course, the media tends to focus more on our rivers and our lakes, which, which I, I can understand. But he says, you know, among us scientists, we know more about New Zealand's rivers than its aquifers or, or even groundwater-fed lowland streams. So he's hoping to try and fill those gaps. We look forward to what he's going to be uh, telling us about. That's very, very cool. Hmm. That brings us to the end of the Cyblog stories for this week. It does. Uh, but it brings us to science events. Yay. And there's all sorts of cool stuff this week. So we'll just go through them chronologically because yep. it's probably the easiest thing. Mm -hmm. um, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of this week in Wellington is New Zealand Institute of Physics Conference for 2011. And that's extremely cool. Tasty. So if you do happen to be around, um, swing by the Rutherford Sorry, the Pipitea campus of Victoria University, because there's going to be full-on physics demonstrations on all three days as well. I'll be there at the stall helping out and breaking stuff, probably. <laughs> um, but it's just going to be very, very cool. Uh, nice to see all New Zealand's physicists getting together and having a, a nice old barney. Is it only during the day? Uh, there is a conference evening, but yeah, it's, it's only during the day. Okay, good to know. Uh, all right, the next one is tomorrow night. Um, and this is, well, in fact, Elf, why don't you tell us about it since you've been involved in judging it? Right, so on Monday evening we have Tell Us a Story Final Number One. Tell Us a Story is a st science storytelling competition for Victoria postgraduate students. I'm one of the organising people for it, and we're having our first final at 6 pm at Club Ivy on Dixon Street in Wellington. Mm -hmm. So rock on up, it's free entry. You're going to see some amazing storytellers mm -hmm. and some pretty funky hosts as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, Amy's helping us host, as well as Elizabeth Connor one of the science communicators, and it's just going to be a great deal of fun. The second final for that is on Thursday. That's also free. It's up at Victoria at 7 o'clock in the Memorial Theatre. It's worth, uh, so my understanding, of correct me if I'm wrong, is that of, of all the people who entered, and, and there were a number of entrants, you picked the top 10, and the top 10 will be speaking on both of these nights, so it's not that if you know if you miss one, you've, you've lost out. Uh, they're just going to be a slightly different uh, atmospheres and ambiances to them, shall we say. <laughs> exactly, to expand their storytelling skills. Indeed. I, I can't wait to see. I'm, I'm very, very, very excited. Now, uh, what else have we got? Oh, then at the... No, in fact... Oh, this should be interesting. At the Wellington Central Baptist Church, of all things, there is a discussion on a panel on the expansion of fossil fuel extraction. So they are going to have... Um, people including a former Green MP, a wildlife photographer, uh, Greenpeace New Zealand, and an environmental researcher talking about hydraulic fractioning, um, talking about fossil fuel extraction. If, if you're interested in, in subjects of that sort, it may not be a, a bad thing to go and have a long, uh, go to, sorry, and have a listen to. That's on Monday as well. Um, come to know life, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> uh, and then what else have we got, Elf? Uh, on Tuesday, we have a, uh, a, a series of lectures, apparently, at Rutherford House in... Oh, that's interesting. Uh, let's skip that one for a moment. Okay. Um, at 12 o'clock on Tuesday, we have a lecture on influenza uh, in the Laby Building up at Victoria University. It's called Wellington's Other Battle from Historical Influenza Remedies to the Latest Surveillance Strategy Strategies with Mass Spectroscopy. Um, so try and head along to that if you can. Oh, excellent. Absolutely. All right. 
then uh, on Thursday the 20th at Vic University, uh, the Calvin campus, um, climate change, population growth and water intensity scenarios and pathways for shaping Wellington's water future. So this is a, a seminar by Nigel, oh dear, I'm going to get this wrong, Tapticlis of the School of Geography, Environment and Earth Sciences at VUW. Um, and he's going to be, well, the, the talk summarizes one of a number of case studies conducted for the New Zealand climate change people just on, on what is going to happen with our water, particularly in Wellington. I'm sure people will be going along to that. I, I will try if I can, because fascinating stuff again. Mm. And then on Friday? Um, and Friday, once again, up at Victoria's <laughs> Kelvin campus in the Hugh McKenzie Building 105. At four o'clock, there's a lecture on talking about sex at school, conversation and sexual development, which um, should be kind of interesting on Friday night. It's by Dr. Brian King, um, and he's talking about uh, the use of as adolescent language uh, as a way to um, relate to sex and subjects thereof. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, with that, I guess we'll be uh, signing off. Elf has to run off to the Carter to go and do more cool work with the astronomy and stuff. So uh, we just wanted to give a huge shout out, what with the Arena disaster this week, to everybody up there who is helping deal with the disaster, not just talking about it, but actually getting out onto the beaches. Um, thank you. Our, our hearts are with you. Uh, and thanks to all our usual sponsors as well. So Rian Xi'an for our wonderful opening and closing themes, um, the Science Media Center for allowing us use of their recording gear and just generally being awesome, Victoria University for letting us use their rooms. Um, that's it. And that's it for this week. So have a good week. Um, see you at NZIP if you happen to swing past. If not, we'll catch you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>